take it, eh? There you go, and what do you know? He'll strike a light. Good day, good day. And how you go, and just say good day, good day, good day, and you'll be right. Welcome to the Midweek End Times News and Trends Briefing as we share major events and what is happening around the world as it relates to Bible prophecy. Today's date is Wednesday, June twenty second, 2016. I don't know about you, but it's always amazing to see how many things are happening around the world as it relates to Bible prophecy and as we're seeing the fulfillment of these prophecies happening. Things around the world are escalating like never before, and it's exciting uh, what a day or what a week will unfold. Here are some news headlines that grabbed my attention to, in the last day or so. And again, we're just barely skimming the surface. There's literally dozens and, and even hundreds of other news articles that we can share, but time doesn't permit. And uh, I, I always like to kind of do a whole range of different things and different issues. So this is why I um, share all the different perspectives and different news articles instead of just a handful of key points. The first uh, news article that grabbed my attention came out of the Israeli National News on Monday, and it uh, was entitled, Gaza Arabs Demand UN Stops Israeli's Anti-Terror Tunnel Wall. So the construction of this underground security wall along Israeli's border uh, with Gaza has prompted an outcry uh, on the Strip. Uh, with calls for intervention by the International Human Rights Organization and the United Nations uh, to block the Israeli plan. The wall, uh, which would run uh, 10 yards underground and, and above ground, is intended to block Hamas terror tunnels and will be entirely built on the Israeli side of the border. So obviously they have the right to do this if this is what they want to do, to protect their borders. And um, But it hasn't stopped the Palestinians from crying foul, however, with claims that the wall would cause environmental damage. In an interview that was published on Sunday out of the uh, newspaper, which was a Hamas mouthpiece, uh, Gaza environmentalists warned that security wall would block underground water from Israel moving into the Gaza Strip. This, they claim, would prevent replenishment of underground aquifers and force Gazans to draw more heavily from alternative sources. The experts cited in the interview also suggested that the wall could cause um, a cave-ins along the border and would block the movement of animal across the Gaza-Israeli border. And of course, Hamas doesn't want to see this happen uh, because they want to continue to do their uh, tunnels into Israel so they can continue to launch their terrorist attack. On to another issue in dealing with Israel, and this is how the media twists a report uh, to try to, because they have a liberal bias and always wanting to go against Israel. But this report came out on Brett Bart on Tuesday, and it was entitled Media, Palestinian Authority Misleading About Palestinian Teen Mistakenly Killed in Stone Throwing Incident. So uh, the Palestinian Authority, which incites its own citizen to carry out murderous attacks on Israelis, is cynically accusing of Israel Defense Forces of committing execution when soldiers mistakenly shot and killed a Palestinian teen while searching for Palestinians carrying out potentially deadly attack on Israeli vehicles, attacks encouraged by the Palestinian itself. Many in the international news media are claiming the innocent teen, they're claiming that he's innocent, uh, was suspected of stone throwing as if he were accused of tossing pebbles at Israelis. Here's a, a couple uh, ideas on how the media reported it. Out of the New York Times headline says, Palestinian 15 killed as Israeli forces sought to halt stone throwing. Out of the Washington Post it said this, Palestinian killed by Israeli military after stone throwing incident. So that wasn't entirely the, the, the real case of what was taking place. So these are just a few examples of uh, similar uh, reporting across the different English uh, language mainstream news media. Actually, just before this uh, team was mistakenly killed, two tourists and one Israeli were uh, lightly wounded when a 
group of Palestinians earlier on Tuesday morning attacked moving vehicles on an Israeli highway that straddles the West Bank. The Palestinian lobbed stones and firebombs at speeding vehicles and poured oil on the road with the goal of causing accidents. Such attacks can be potentially fatal for obvious reasons, and one stone that can shatter a windshield can cause a driver to lose control. A firebomb can potentially create a vehicle uh, explosion, and indeed on Tuesday, an, an Israeli bus passenger and two tourists were injured in an accident caused by Palestinian troublemakers. The Herazet newspaper had uh, run down on the killing and had a different report than what the other lame stream uh, news media like the New York Times and the Washington Post said, but here's their um, take on it. At 1 a.m. on Tuesday, a firebomb and rocks were thrown and oil spilled onto the highway which runs between Jerusalem and Mudini. The Israeli bus passenger and two tourists in another vehicle were injured in the incident which occurred near the village of Beret Serah. An officer and group of soldiers from the brigade um, responded to the incident, spotted injured people, chased after the stone throwers, and fired accidentally at a car, killing the Palestinian teen, army investigators found. The Israeli Defense Force said that the group of Palestinians tried to disrupt traffic by throwing rocks and firebombs at passenger cars, um, significantly damaged the vehicles, wounding three passengers, two suspects were arrested. The Israeli Defense Force uh, spokesperson office said that in the course of uh, gunfire to remove a threat, uh, uninvolved people near the scene of an incident were uh, accidentally hit. Because Israel is a democracy with the rule of law, as opposed to a terror-stained uh, Palestinian tyranny, the Israel National uh, Defense Force has already opened an investigation to the incident. The Herazet uh, pointed out the newspaper uh, said that the uh, investigation will uh, focus on whether the soldiers opened fire according to protocol and if the forces felt the clear and immediate threat from the family car. The newspaper also continued, according to the Army's open fire regulations, uh, which were reamped earlier this year, soldiers should not fire at Palestinian assailants fleeing after an attack unless the suspect poses an immediate threat. So the decision to investigate the incident is a result of the Army policy to probe any lethal shooting uh, that is not as a result of direct combat. And yet the Palestinian officials, who almost daily incite their own people to carry out such an attack, squarely blame Israel for this particular incident and claim that the Israeli Defense Force carried out an execution. So, of course, Israel is going to be blamed for the terrorist attack or some of these other incidents that the Palestinians are forcibly uh, doing, and then they have this misleading stories carried out by the media. On to another issue on uh, in Asia, uh, how the um, uh, this report came out of the Newsmax on Tuesday, how Japan military on alert for possible North Korean ballistic missile launch. Uh, the Japan's uh, military was on alert for a possible North Korean ballistic uh, launch, a government source said on Tuesday, with a media reporting its Navy and anti-missile Patriot batteries uh, have been told to shoot down any projectile heading toward Japan. North Korea appeared to have moved an intermediate uh, range missile to its east coast, but there is no signs of an imminent launch, according to a South Korean news agency reporting citing an unnamed uh, government source. A South Korean defense official said that it couldn't confirm this particular report um, and said that the military was watching the North's missile activities closely. The tension in the region has been uh, high since the isolated North Korea um, conducted its uh, fourth nuclear test in uh, January, followed that the with the satellite launch and the test launches with the various missiles. Japan has put an anti-ballistic missile forces on alert uh, this uh, many times. 
uh, this year after detecting signs of missile launches. So the Japanese government sources said that there were signs again that North Korea might be preparing to launch an intermediate uh, range of uh, uh, missile, the same missile that attempted attempted to launch in, in May uh, last month, uh, prompting an order for military to go on alert. So again, the region is unstable. Everyone's on high alert because of this uh, unstable country, and mainly the leader there is unstable. Um, so it's going to be interesting how uh, this area in the Asia plays itself out. Also speaking of how it's going to play out, it'll be interesting what happens on Thursday with the vote uh, from Britain uh, to exit out of uh, the European Union. Uh, this report came out of the Vox.com on Monday, and it uh, was entitled, Brexit uh, supporters say that they're worried about immigration. The real problems are deeper. So on Thursday, the voters in Britain will go to the polls to decide whether to stay in the European Union or to exit um, the for that option. For many the Brits, uh, the debate isn't about Britain's economic future. It's a culture war over British identity. Many supporters see leaving the EU as an essential to safeguarding Britain's distinctive uh, culture and political institutions, while opponents have portrayed uh, the exit campaign as naivetous and intolerant. The debate became even more heated after a member of parliament was murdered on Thursday, last Thursday, by a man with alleged ties to a white supremacist group. And while many pre-exit uh, supporters say that they're concerned about the immigration, this is actually a shorthand for a larger set of social anxieties held by many Britons, especially older voters in the outlining parts of the UK. The post-industrial uh, economy has delivered an economic boom for some British people and stagnation for others. Many Britons feel anxious about the broader shifts and immigration make uh, convenient scapegoats. And so it is uh, a major um, vote that will be taking place. It'll be interesting how it plays itself out. I believe they will get out of the EU and become its own uh, sovereign nation again where they're not going to be uh, tied into the the European Union, uh, all kinds of baggage that goes with that, uh, but um, it will be uh, one of those uh, um, defining moments for a country. Uh, but again, Britain has uh, continued to uh, go down a horrendous path with the amount of migration of the Islamic uh, community. And now they're wanting to see more Muslims in, in positions of power, like you see the new London mayor. And of course, uh, most of the Muslims would believe that Sharia law is more important and higher uh, in authority than the um, country's constitution. So it will be interesting what happens next. Also, when speaking of a migration issue, on Monday, June 20th, marks World Refugee Day. Uh, this report came out of the Christian Headline News on Monday, and it talked about uh, World Refugee Day. 65 million people affected, says UN Stats. So in honor of the day, uh, the United Nations has released statistics detailing that the refugee crisis has now affected 65.3 million people worldwide. According to the Christian Post, the United Nations High Commission for Refugees stated 65.3 million refugees accounted for at the end of 2015 represents 5 million people increase from the previous year. Various humanitarian organizations mark the World Refugee Day by sharing refugee stories and encouraging individuals and governments to help those who have been forced to flee their homes due to the conflict in their home country. The majority of world refugees are from Syria, Afghanistan, Somalia, although many are also from Iraq, and many of these refugees have fled to neighboring countries such as Turkey, Pakistan, Lebanon, and additionally over a million migrated to Europe. The influx of refugees into Europe and other Western countries has sparked these intense debate about border security. 
Uh, the article also goes on to say and talks in about this ministry called Open Doors, which is a great ministry that talks about the and helps the persecution church. Uh, but they are especially concerned with aiding Christian refugees who are often faced with intense persecution for their faith. So over 7.6 million Christians have been displaced since the Syrian civil war began. The number of Christians in the region has drastically lessened, going from 2 million in 2003 to only a few thousand currently. Open Doors has been uh, on the ground in the region for over the last two decades, partnering with persecuted Christians and enabling them to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to their communities. Um, while other organizations have left, as many were not expecting this to be a long-term crisis, uh, open Door Ministry is equipped to be there for the long haul, and they have done a fantastic support and help for the persecution Christians. And so it's going to continue to be a, a greater threat to, in these last days, the persecution of Christians. We'll mention another report in just a moment. But also in speaking of the refugee, um, this report came out of the Brett Bart Report on Sunday, and it talked about how six diseases return to the U.S. as migration advocates celebrate World Refugee Day. So these six diseases that were near eradication and making a combat now in the U.S. as taxpayer-funded refugee resettlement industry um, launches a propaganda blitz about the so-called World Refugee Day this Monday. So the returning diseases are tuberculosis, measles, whooping cough, mumps, scarlet fever, and bubonic plague. So the near eradicating of the d disease in the U.S. <clears throat> near the 20th century was a remarkable accomplishment of American civilization. Until recently, most Americans believe that the diseases were gone from the shores for good. But the politicized public health system and the rise of the subsidized migration into the United States, however, have combined a reverse for a uh, reverse century of progress. So the number of foreign-born residents uh, from the country has increased by 31 million in three decades, uh, from 11 million in 1986 to 42 million in 2015. That's a lot of people. Uh, immigration in the U.S. during this uh, time uh, from the um, Middle East, uh, Africa, Asia, South America, and Central America were all part of these diseases uh, that are prevalent. Uh, an extra 31 million have arrived in a number of ways. Approximately 3 million are refugees, 11, 11 million are illegal immigrants. That's more than half the population here in Australia. They're all illegal. And the remaining, uh, remainder of legal immigrants, assailies, and parolees. The re uh, report also went on to talk about the different stats uh, of the diseases and sicknesses and just a lot of interesting information that the article um, stated. Also, in uh, continuing with this uh, whole immigration issue, uh, this report also was uh, talking about the United Kingdom and what was going on there out of the Brett Barr report on Monday. said an analysis, immigration costs taxpayers up to uh, 17 billion pounds a year. So that's close to 25 billion U.S. dollars. So the mass migration to the United Kingdom has been found to cost uh, uh, billions of pounds in new analysts of academic studies of just days before the Britain's referendum on the European Union. Only a minority of migrants are net financial beneficiaries to the United Kingdom. The overall migrants themselves cost billions of pounds every year. The new study by Migration Watch, released today, has found that the uh, true cost of migrants is between 4 and 17 billion pounds annually. So the cost of having migration and immigration and these refugees coming into a country is a very costly um, program uh, for any particular country. Also, uh, this was a, a report that came out on Tuesday about the Muslim migrants is a threat to the LGBT community. And this report was uh, out of the Brett Bart report. 
And he says that the unspeakable atrocities in Orlando last uh, Sunday was uh, opened by the floodgates of torrent and heated discussion about the reasons behind America's deadliest mass shooting. So depending on where people place themselves on the political spectrum, the causes either continue to lack the effect of gun control uh, in the U.S. and evil spread of radical Islamic uh, be- terror or the seemingly never-ending fear of loathing uh, of the LGBT community. The reality the reality is all these elements are contributing factors, and the toxic mix has led to a horrific explosion. More than a hundred innocent people were killed or wounded. There's no doubt the mass murderer, uh, Omar uh, Mateen, was influenced throughout his life uh, in his views of uh, from his father, uh, who is a Muslim, uh, and he posted a video on Facebook after the attack saying, God will punish those involved in homosexuality. The writer of this article continued on and finished writing um, the following in detail a countless of obscene assaults on women and gays in um, uh, Europe by Muslim immigrants. And we've talked about this over and over, different reports and warning what would happen in this country. And although Omar Mateen was American born, his devotion to the twisted extreme Islamic view of homosexuality must be regarded as a key element in both his apparent self-loathing and his fatal decision to mercilessly end the lives of everyone he saw celebrating love, life, and diversity. And this is one of those big debates about from the whole uh, gun rights issue to the immigration issue to the uh, LGBT community. So there's a combination of factors with everything involved here, but ultimately what it came down to, it was not a guns issue, it was an Islamic issue uh, when you get down to the, that viewpoint. Um, also, the Obama administration will delete any references to ISIS or Allah uh, in this current uh, report uh, from um, the Federalist uh, uh, website brings up this little situation where the Attorney General Loretta Lynch said uh, on Sunday that the FBI will delete mentions of ISIS when they release the transcript uh, of 911 calls saying uh, that they don't want to further proclaim this man's allegiance um, to this uh, terrorist group and further his propaganda. But over and over, the Obama administration has had a problem in claiming that it was radical Islamic terrorism. On to another issue uh, in persecution. Christians gather together to remember the Christians killed by Muslims, and then a Muslim man comes dressed up as a priest and then blows himself up and slaughtered Christians. This report came out on Monday out of the Gospel Herald. Also, Shubat.com carried this same report and talking about how Christians in uh, Iraq gathered together to remember the massacre in which the Ottoman Empire slaughtered hundreds of thousands of Christians from 1914 to 1918. And it talked about how this Muslim terrorist entered in disguised as a priest and blows himself up and killing uh, the Christians that were there. So the Islamic terrorists are getting clever in how they approach their persecution of Christians. Some of them are just so blatant. Other ones, just like this guy disguising himself as a priest and then uh, uh, destroys and kills uh, Christians along the way. Also, in dealing with a a church issue, more of an apostate issue, uh, the Church of England uh, to launch a new LGBT congregation. This report came out on Tuesday out of the Christian headlines and how the Church of England will be launching a new congregation, especially for the LGBT community this summer. According to Christianity Today, the new congregation is called True North and seeks to bring the uh, LGBT community into the community uh, with the body of Christ. True North will meet at St. Matthew's in Walsall, Um, where most of the leadership oppose gay marriage, and True North thus aims to provide worship, mutual support, and encouragement for the Christians and the LGBTI, you probably throw Q and and C in there for confusion, community. Uh, Reverend Jim Trod, a vicar of St. Matt's, uh, opposes same-sex marriage, but nevertheless welcomes the new congregation and says this, While I and many of the leadership of St. Matthew's hold a traditional view of human sexuality, LGBT community Christians are first and foremost children of God and made in His image, he said. Another church leader, uh, uh, the bishop, said that uh, 
I understand why the LGBTI Christians feel the need to a place to meet and worship where they can feel secure and support their God-given sexual identity. They will be very much a part of our diocese and will look forward to worshiping with them in due course. The congregation uh, will be led by Monica uh, Arnold, who said, while the debate rages on passionately and at the highest levels of the church in England, the LGBTI people continue to live with the realities of their daily life and mixed reception and many receive in parishes. An opportunity to worship and enjoy fellowship without hiding and denying any fundamental aspects of their identity is also important to all these aspects of a healthy life. So this church is continuing down a a road of apostasy, walking away from the fundamentals of Scripture and core doctrines. For example, uh, one of the core doctrines is the holiness of God, uh, how he does not tolerate sin, and how the LGBTI community continues to embrace a sinful lifestyle that God has uh, set as an abomination. And um, so how can you be a Christian and continue in this lifestyle? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's hypocritical. It's an oxymoron. Um, and, and again, as we said before, the sin of homosexuality in the whole LGBTI community uh, is just as sinful as immorality. And it is immorality of adultery or fornication, sex outside of marriage. It's all sin. But we must not continue in our sin. Or thinking that it's uh, okay to live with this. This is why we need to repent of our sinful ways and get right with Jesus Christ. So there's no need to start a whole new community of believers. If they are believers, if you are a believer, you wouldn't be in this lifestyle. Uh, yes, you can struggle with certain elements within our flesh, but we need to deny that, take our thoughts captive into the obedience of Christ, and start walking in the holiness of God. We must not compromise in our walk, in our life, in our belief according to Scripture. And again, um, even when we're dealing with uh, uh, political views, uh, there is a worldview at hand, the battle of worldviews. And the battle is going to get more intense in these last days. Either you hold a biblical worldview or you have a satanic worldview. Either you hold a conservative worldview or you have a liberal worldview, which eventually leads to just madness and chaos, which is what we're seeing taking place in so many countries. And this is where the church, the body of Christ, needs to wake up and seize the moment while we have the opportunity to tell as many people about Jesus Christ in his soon return, to to live a life of holiness, to to live a life of courage and boldness, to share the gospel with as many people as possible, and that we would love um, Christ and, and the Lord and the word of God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, and that we love others and people would see that love within us. And uh, that we live our lives without compromise, uh, where we have that power and authority in our life um, that uh, we can proclaim without any hypocrisy or fakeness or um, any other thing that can stumble us along the way. Amen. And that concludes today's update. Until next time, may the Lord radically and outrageously bless you.